Has anybody talked to you about a guy called Big Jim, Big Jim Sullivan? Has that name ever come up? No, no, no. Oh, well, that's interesting. And I don't know if he's still alive. Well, there were, there were two guys, but aside from Cliff Richard, the other guy here was Marty Wilde and the Wildcats. Has you heard about him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, Cliff Richard was going to be at the, at the uh, event last what week. Was he? he was sick. Oh, shame. Um, well, Marty Wilde, the Wildcats, the guitarist was Big Jim Sullivan. And, uh, and he was really the kind of father of British rock and roll guitarists. Everybody who ever played rock and roll in this country, sort of somewhere or other, they ran across him, and, and, and he was like a major guru figure for them all. And he would, uh, he would be really interesting to know what he thought about Scotty. I mean, there's no question, these guys. I remember sitting on a radio thing with, with Marty Wilde in the 70s, and we, we, I how it came to be, I don't know why we were there. All I remember is we played Trying to Get to You, and both of us just like completely in awe of it all over again as we had been whenever we first heard it. And in some ways that's possibly my favourite Scotty Moore guitar playing. You know, it's just an incredible guitar part from start to finish. Have you ever heard the original version of that song by the Eagles, a group called the Eagles? Nothing to do with the other Eagles. It's great, it's really interesting to hear. And I, once again, one wonders if Scotty ever heard it. If he ever comes back on my show, I'll play it to him and see what he says. No, I, well, actually, he wants to come back to your show, okay. but I had no idea there was another version. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there, is, there is the original version of, the, of that song, which I, really? wrote, which I only got about a year ago when my listeners sent it to me. Holy cow. You know, because, you know, George Harrison says that's the song that really, you know, defined his guitar player. Oh, interesting. And the night that we were at his house, uh, he picked up a, a balalaika, and... He started playing this amazing version right. of this, and it, it hadn't hit me the whole e afternoon or evening that I was sitting there with George Harrison until he picked up the guitar or that you know, Russian instrument and started playing this song. It was absolutely amazing. Great. And uh, that song is probably—I mean, looking looking at that song is just—you know—that should have been Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah. You know that that's probably a, a more defining yeah, for moment me. for me. Yeah. And me too. Um, and the, and the, the guitar part on the, the, you know, what Scotty makes a guitar part is a sax line on, on the original. It's not a good, there isn't a guitar in sight. Really? I, you know, I just, I've, I've never heard him talk about it. Do you want to stop this and hear it for three minutes? Oh, yeah, and just, and just a second. Right. I, I just have one more, okay. one more definitive question here right. for you. Uh, looking back as a music historian, you know, Sun Records had such an amazing effect you know, on everything, and without even, you know, Sam Phillips intending it to be or, or knowing it, but, you know, what's your opinion about Sun Records and the whole, you know, big scheme of, of music? Well, it's funny, because whenever Sam Phillips talks about that whole time, to me, he does himself a disservice, because he kind of makes it feel, it seem as if he knew what he was doing, and, I, and I'm absolutely certain he didn't really, but he was, the great thing about him was, that he allowed it to happen. That sh he should pat himself on the back for, a, for a, he created the circumstances by he had Elvis and he got the th he got Scotty and Bill into the same room, room as the other. He doesn't have to take any more credit than that. The idea that I knew if I could find a white boy who signed up, but I don't believe it for a second. But so that's number one. Number two, he was a very very innovative engineer. The sounds that he got were great. I mean, he he it wasn't by accident. He'd been recording radio broadcasts for a long time in, in uh, Memphis, those big orchestras and sending them out from the Peabody Hotel and all that. He was an experienced guy. Three, he allowed, I mean allowed is a funny word for me to use, but he did business with black people. He's a white man in Memphis doing business with black people. He's saying to black musicians from this countryside around Memphis, if you, hey, any of you want to come and make a record, here's my studio, I'm going to charge you, you know, a commercial rate, it's not a fortune, it's not, I'm not giving it away here, I'm not running a charity, I'm running a business. Pay me my money, come in here, you can make a record. Who else was doing that? Nobody was doing that. So through this openness of him, which I have to give him enormous credit for, Harlan Wolf, Ike Turner, B.B. King, Roscoe Gordon, I was going to say Johnny Ace, I don't think that's right. But enough, yeah. you know, more than enough. Junior Parker, who's one of my all-time favorites, Rufus Thomas, uh, I mean, if he had, I mean, the funny thing is that if he had never discovered Elvis, Sam Phillips had done a marvelous thing from my point of view, because he was a vital guy in that R&B emergence before rock and roll. So then he does it all over again, and I mean, the, the joke is that apart from Elvis, 
And even with Elvis, he clearly had a lot of t a hard time knocking on the door and getting anybody to give him any time at all in there. And if Marion hadn't been there, who knows if it ever would have happened. Carl Perkins was being turned away, you know, Johnny Cash, had, they all had, all they ever described is how hard it was to get Sam's attention. Mm -hmm. But one way or another, he was there, he, you know, and he was once again with Jack Clement to help him, a catalyst for some of the great records of, of that era as well. But I just wish he would stop trying to tell everybody he did it on purpose. 